Hello everybody, welcome to the official announcement for the 2022 Enemy on Board 1v1 competition. My name is Toxix. Many of you within the community may already know me, but for those who don't, I'll give a brief introduction. I'm an experienced Enemy on Board player who has played since the open beta, and I previously worked as a referee, balance coordinator, and commentator for the largest Enemy on Board tournament to date, which was the 3v3 tournament that happened at the start of 2021. Recently, a fellow player and one of the leaders of the largest Enemy on Board Discord community, who goes by Honor, reached out to me and asked if I could host the upcoming tournament. I agreed, but under the pretense that I could mess with the rules a bit. Initially, the plan was to do a no perks, wrench only fight between the two combatants, who could also bring in a starter weapon of their choice. Since then, however, the rules and general structure of this tournament game mode had changed significantly, so I'm going to review the finalized details for you now. Pre round information. Before each round starts, both players will send their build via direct message to have it approved by a referee. An image or description of this build will suffice, and players will not be able to change it for the round after that point. A player can, however, run different builds on different rounds, even if fighting the same player. This is done for two reasons. First, in order to work around counterpicking, which is the act of changing your character on the pre-round screen in order to try and play around the other person's build. And second, so that a referee can verify that a player's build falls within the rules. These specific weapon, character, and perk restrictions will all be listed in another video, which will be provided in the description of this one once that video is completed, and in an announcement message on the Zenith Discord server. It should also be noted that each person will only be allowed to use one perk, with some minor exceptions. Advanced Optics on Triss, Channeler on Serral, Make It Rain, and Scavenger are all allowed and do not count towards an individual's one perk slot. Also, before the round starts, each person will be randomly assigned to one of the two cyborg cores where they will stand when the combat stage begins. Stage 1, Collection Stage. The moment the round starts, the two players are free to go wherever they like on the map, a rule that applies for the entirety of this stage. Players are encouraged to use this time to collect, relocate, and store scavenged items, even in places outside of the combat zone, for reasons that will later become clear. It is very important to note that during this time, the only items that a player is allowed to use are cameras and smoke bombs, and that alien vaccines and stim colas are completely banned from use even in this pre-combat phase. Players also cannot pick up each other's starting items during the stage and the next stage even if they are left unattended. They may steal scavenge items from one another as they please. Players are not allowed to do generators during the first outage. Two of the three referees will instead do the generators, and they will both kill themselves so that they may individually spectate both players to assure that they abide by the game's rules. Players then MUST return to the center room before the second generator outage occurs. If they are not present, the game will be voided and the offending player will receive a tick. If a player receives two ticks at any point in the tournament, they will be completely disqualified. After the second generator outage, the game then enters Stage 2. Stage 2. Prep Stage. Both players, under watch from the now spectator mode referees, go straight to the generator that needs repairing during the second outage, and cannot pick up or move items until that generator is finished, even if they pass them on the way there. They will do the generator together, receive charge on their starting items if they have it in their possession. If they don't, we will not stall the round and the player will not be compensating for forgetting to bring it. After this, they are then allowed to enter the armory and organize their items for one minute, which will be indicated at the top of the screen. Axes and heavy weapons are banned from use, and each player must receive one wrench and one knife if they would like from the now open armory. Taking more than one wrench or knife from the armory will be grounds for removal from the tournament. All bandages and shields found inside the armory, however, are allowed to be taken and moved anywhere on the map up until this stage ends. Players still cannot take each other's starting items during this phase, but once more, any scavenged items are free game. Before the one minute timer runs out, players must return to their assigned cyborg pads and will begin once the timer at the top hits zero. At this point, the game enters stage three. Stage three, combat stage. At this point, all boundary rules are now in effect. Both players are free to move about as they choose within the confines of the current phase's boundaries. Very importantly, players are allowed to be outside the phase boundaries for a maximum of 10 seconds in order to evade their enemies, take different routes, or access their item stashes. The timer resets every time that you step foot back within the boundaries. Being hit with a weapon, fist, or bumping up against your enemy also resets your out-of-bounds times, just as re-entering would, which is done to discourage people from trying to win by blocking others out of the map.
the rules on picking up others' items are now lifted. If you find an item, save scavenge items that are banned or axes, you are always allowed to use it if you would like. There are three map phases during the combat stage that define the boundaries. The map shrinks in size over time, and players are expected to be within the boundaries when entering a new phase, although we will be lenient with judging this. The third referee will give a brief warning twice before moving into subsequent phases, once at one minute before, and a second time ten seconds before. The final map phase does not have a time limit, unlike the other two thanks to its small size. Make sure to familiarize yourself with the map boundaries of all three phases before playing to ensure that you do not accidentally leave the boundaries for more than 10 seconds and disqualify yourself. Here's a visualization of the boundaries of all three phases. That should be everything. Good luck and may the best player win.